Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Deepa Robbins from Designs by D and I thank you all for joining me today. Today I have a couple of Christmas cards that I wanted to share with you. I've noticed recently that um, a lot of companies, not just Spellbinders, but I'm going to focus on Spellbinders today, they tend to release products in different releases and they're not always released as coordinating products. And I've kind of looked through the products that they have and found some that look like they do coordinate. They're not sold as coordinating products, but you could definitely buy them separately and put them together to make products that coordinate. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do today. I basically searched through the stuff that I have and found that there are some of these gift dies that are included in Spellbinders All Aboard uh, card kit, which was released about a month ago. And there's also the Glimmer Gift Border, which was a Glimmer plate that was released by Spellbinders a while ago. And that pairs perfectly with these dies. So here are the dies. They come with that little choo-choo train that comes with the all aboard set. And not only are those presents neat to use, but they also have like a little Christmas tree that I'm gonna use as well. And what I'm showing you here is that I've used this picture on my phone to create a color palette. And I found that there were a couple colors that I didn't quite have in terms of cardstock. So what I'm gonna do is make my own colored cardstock today, which is very easy to do. And I'll show you how I do that. So I have these two pieces of white cardstock and I basically basically put them down on like a, um, a rough piece of paper. That's just some construction paper that I'm never gonna use. And I'm using my ink pad to apply the ink right onto the cardstock. Now I do wanna note that I am not pressing hard at all. I'm just kind of scraping it gently across the top and every time I scrape across the color sticks to the, um, to the cardstock. And I do have reinkers for these ink pads. So I'm not too um, averse to doing this because I can always reink my pads. Now, I did have an issue with one of my pads here, so I wasn't sure about the reds. I used the Galactic Stream for the blue and the Coral Bliss, but then I used this crimson color because I wasn't too sure if that was the sort of red that I wanted. So I need to re-ink my pad. This is how I keep all of my re-inkers in those Tim Holtz alcohol inks tins. And all you have to do is sort of take your pad and apply your ink right to the top of it. And go over it a few times because as you're doing this, the um, pad, as you can see here, will start soaking up that ink. You'll see it soaking right in. And then once it starts to pool on top of your ink pad, then you know you've added enough. It's super saturated now. Or So what you want to do now is stop it applying your ink and then you can just go ahead and use your ink pad and you can see how nicely this is working here on my cardstock now that I've re-inked it. So if you are going to use this process I recommend not using your dried out pads and using pads where you have re-inkers just for yourself. Now these are a couple other pieces of cardstock that I'm going to use with this color scheme and I chose to use that Coral Bliss ink. I'm not actually going to use that crimson ink there on the side. So I use my gift dies and I cut out all these pieces and now I'm just going to kind of assemble them, which doesn't take too long. All I'm really doing is adding the little pieces that would simulate the uh, string on the present and then also the little bows that go on top. And I cut all of these out from Sizzix Opulent Gold Mirror cardstock just to kind of add some interest on top of those nice uh, vibrant colors that I have. And so it has like a long strip of that um, that string die and you just kind of add it and then cut off the piece pieces you want and you can totally use it use like one string on like a whole bunch of uh, like maybe three to four presents. And I'm just showing you how I did this with this uh, Galactic Stream colored cardstock, but I did do this on all of the other ones. I'm not gonna show you all of that. I'll just quickly show you all of the little presents that I end up with at the end of this. So those are the four and I'm just adding the little bow on top. Now this probably took me, took me maybe like 15 minutes or so to do it for all of the little presents. It really doesn't take too long. And if you can see here, I'm trying to show you that I can stack them in different ways so I don't have to use a bow on the top of each and every single one of these presents. And the stacking just kind of adds some interest to your card as well, like so. 
So I'm adding one more bow to this present. And then I just kind of, you know, left some of them blank and then stack them up as I put the card together. It really is up to you. And if you find that you, you know, you don't have a bow somewhere, you can just cut it out and add it afterwards. So these are all the little images that I ended up with. I ended up using two sets in each color. And then I had this little Christmas die that also comes with that all aboard card kit that I mentioned earlier. And I cut this out of some Sizzix Opulent Matte Gold cardstock. So it doesn't shine, but it has a really nice look to it, which I find it works well with this card. And then it also has this little uh, edge at the bottom of the tree, kind of like snow. So I cut this out with some Sizzix Opulent Ivory Glitter cardstock just to add some interest. So that's my little tree there. I'll add like a couple of those to my background just to break up the presents. And then I have the Spellbinders Diagonal Stripes Embossing Folder. Now this is a slimline embossing folder and I'm making a mini slimline card here. So this works great. It fits right in my folder here. And I'm applying some water with a spritz bottle here. And I do recommend doing this, especially when you have heavier weight card stocks because when you put them through, um, your embossing folders they do tend to tear a bit so this made the cardstock a bit wet and allowed it to bend to the shape of the folder now all I have to do is put this all together so I do want to mention Yana Yana Smakula she does um, have a lot of products with spellbinders and I watch her videos all the time I love the colors that she uses and I love the stuff that she puts together so I really do feel like she is a bit of um someone I look up to in the crafty community along with some other people and I like the idea that she has going recently with her Christmas card series whereby she has different elements that she puts around her card panel and she pops them up with some foam squares now I think her foam squares are a little thicker than mine uh, mine are a little bit thinner just because if I'm putting this through the mail, I don't want to have too much thickness to my card and I do want to have that dimension. So I will link um, these foam squares that I have in my description on my blog and you can definitely check those out. They're just from Amazon and I find that they're just perfect for items that you're not going to be hand given that are not going to be hand given to somebody that you're going to put through the mail to reduce your cost of postage and make sure that your card gets to your recipient in one piece. So I'm just using that technique where I'm placing these gift boxes all over the front of my card panel. So I've added that Christmas tree and I think I'm going to add a second one to sort of offset it. And then another tip that I have is that these overhanging presents can still be used. So I cut off the edges of the overhanging presents and then I'll attach them to the other side of the panel or different areas of the panel to simulate a continuous background like a pattern paper would be. So as I'm showing you here, these are the little tiny pieces that I cut off of the presents on the left side of the card. And I'm just adding this to the right side to just create a nice continuous pattern, as I said. And you can do this with any of your cards or any designs that you may have. I find that it really helps complete the look of your card and makes it look a bit more professional. It's really, um, again, another tip that I've picked up from some other designers along the way. I think I originally saw this on um, Jennifer McGuire's channel, which is another designer that I watch a lot. So anyways, I have this Sp Spellbinders Rose Gold Foil, and I glimmered this sentiment from Yana's Christmas Sentiments uh, Glimmer Set. And I like this set because it has all these nice Christmas sentiments that aren't too big so you can kind of fit them on these small slimline cards and it has the corresponding die to go with it so that I can cut out these sentiments which I think is like a really bang for your buck kind of set because I love dies that come with stamps or these plates that you can kind of create a nice finished product to add to your card. So I'll pop up the center with a couple foam squares and then I'll add a, glue, a bit of glue along the sides because I have those presents that are already popped up on either side of the sentiment. So I don't need some more foam. It'll just kind of offset the image. And once I have that on there nice and good, I'll go ahead and embellish the front of my card. So I kind of went a bit hog wild on this panel. Um, I am going to be making a second one, but on this one I used a lot of AB crystal and gold lolly beads. These are nail art gems that I have gotten from Amazon and I've mentioned it so many times. You can look at the link in my description. Sorry, it won't be in my description. It'll be in my blog, but there's a link there and you can definitely see if these are available in your area. 
Okay, so I'm going to give you a heads up here. Um, after this panel, I'm going to be working on a bigger 5x7 card. And in that card, I am going to show you how to refoil perfectly. Now, if you're new to glimmer foiling, you've probably had a lot of issues where you kind of foiled and had some overfoiling or underfoiling, and you feel like your panel is garbage. Don't ever throw it away. I'm going to show you how to refoil even after you've removed your plate. So as you can see here, on this piece, I foiled it with Spellbinder's Aura foil using the same Yana's Christmas Sentiments um, set. And you can see that I have a lot of underfoiling at the end there on the Seasons word. So all you have to do is take your plate, put it back on top, and sort of wiggle it around because it fits into these indentations. Now, if you look at the back panel I'm showing you here, you can see that indentation on the back of the cardstock. So since we put this through a die cutting machine, the, pe the pressure creates an indentation and you can definitely stick your glimmer plate in there again, jiggle it a bit and you'll see that it's not moving so you know you have it in the right spot. Add your foil and glimmer it again and I'll show you right here that once you get this down, you can refoil perfectly. Look, there's no um, you know, double foiling or anything. It just came out perfectly foiled 100% well. So I definitely recommend trying this little technique and once you perfect it as I've said you'll just you'll have so much more fun foiling because you'll know that you won't have to you know rework your items over and over. So now I'm using that Spellbinders um, gift border and I'm going to be using this quick trimmer from Spellbinders which I do like I would recommend giving it a try. And I've cut my foil to size and I'm just gonna glimmer like the left side of my inside of my card here. Now, because this is a slimline card, I can put this through my die cutting machine to, to glimmer the inside. Now I'm showing you here it how I place it on my plate. It is a little wide, but I use the Sizzix Big Shot Plus. So because of that extra space on that die cutting machine, I can push this through and glimmer this perfectly. And I can also do it a second time and do that perfectly as well. Now, when you have bigger cards, like the five by seven card that I'm gonna do, this becomes more of an issue. And I had a big issue trying to get this through my machine, even with the Big Shot. But I'll get to that a bit later on. So anyways, this one turned out perfectly. And if you look at this matte uh, foil, it looks really nice. And I'm going to go ahead and add my uh, sentiment with the Alta New Holiday Wishes stamp set. I'll be using this masking technique, which I tend to use a lot. So I just mask off my scripty word and I stamp out the printed type in black Versafine Clear Nocturne ink. And then once I've stamped that out, I will mask off the printed area and then just stamp out the scripty area and the nice color that I want to add interest to my card with. So that stamped out nicely. I had a little bit of lift off my cardstock just because I haven't used this particular stamp before. It's very new, so it kind of sticks. And I've masked off now the printed area and I'll add that galactic stream. Oh, sorry, this is starlight. You know what happened? I used the wrong color. <laughs> so actually the color that I wanted to use here was the galactic stream to match the present that I had on the front of my card, which was what I was showing you. Um, I used the starlight, but it didn't, you know, make too much of a contrast. It was pretty close to that color, but I did you know, I do want to mention that I did want to use the Galactic Stream to match. So anyway, sorry about my head getting in the way here. I have to line it up perfectly so that I get that bottom sentiment just so. And that's how the inside turns out. Now I'm going to show you the other card. So as you can see, I got that first plate on nice. And then the second part of the plate wouldn't fit through. So I kind of had to put it through on a bit of an angle. So it did glimmer parts of the plate, but not completely. But we're going to fix that in a second and I'll show you how. First, I'll stamp out my sentiment, which again is using an Alta new set called Blessings. This one has um, like a bit more religious uh, sentiments on it for Christmas. So I stepped that out in some black and then I'm going to add the Happy Holidays in the Galactic Stream ink. Once again, I think I use a starlight by accident, <laughs> but it's a nice blue and it works well with the card anyways. So this is how I fixed that little error. <laughs> so I took a lot more of those gift boxes and I stacked them up a bit higher and then I added my string and bow to it to kind of add a bit of interest to the inside and cover up a little bit of my mistake. 
So here are the final two cards. This is the first one with the complete gift border on the left hand side, which I think turned out nice on the inside. And then this is the second card, which was arranged in the same way. And the items are spaced a little more sparsely on the front of the card, which I think created a nice look. And then on the inside, I have my little crafty error, which if I hadn't told you, you wouldn't have even noticed. So those are my two cards for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell to be notified of any other videos that I do post. Um, go ahead and take a look at my blog. All of my items and my supplies that I've used have been linked there. And I urge you to go ahead and look through your crafty stash and find coordinating products, whether it's stencils, stamps, dies, foil plates. You can definitely find things to coordinate. I've coordinated stuff within the same brand, but you can find stuff among different brands. I really think that the possibilities are endless and this is if you know me this is my tagline the possibilities are endless but it's true they are so anyways i hope you've had a, a great time watching my video and i'm going to leave you with a playlist another video and a subscription button for you have a great weekend guys and i'll see you next time bye